Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing and testing the DYS F4 flight controller and DYS F30 amp 4-in-1 ESC uh, for noise and to see how good it copes with noise. Now uh, we're going to be sticking them in together with this ESC, with the ESC that belongs to it. And the reason why is because I don't believe this has any filtration on the, v on the VCC port and it does not have any 12 volt regulators. So it would be really pointless to test that because we're just going to get the exact noise that's coming back from the ESC. So that would go back to your ESC. So what I thought is we're just going to put them together as how they are supposed to be. And this is the F30 amp ESC. So I'm going to put them together and we're going to run uh, the v uh, VCC to uh, the VTX. And then we have 5 volt here, which will run to the camera. And we're going to be recording the FPV footage while we induce the most amount of noise uh, from the motor to this ESC. So we can see how good it copes with voltage spikes, uh, noise reduction, and voltage drops. Um, now this does have a OSD. The, the, the flight controller is running an OSD, which is the Betaflight OSD, which is just absolutely phenomenal. I really love the Betaflight OSD. Uh, you could just change your PIDs right on the fly, really just put your quad on the floor and just start changing away. Uh, you don't need a PC, you don't need nothing. So that's good. So. Um, so we're going to use them together like I mentioned and um, they do come with pins and everything is just basically already soldered on so we just stick it on and we should be good to go. Alright guys so before we begin let's just take a look at the pinouts and then just check the uh, what each pin actually does or hole would actually does because there's nothing really labeled on the board except the signals. So let's just do this very quick and very fast. Uh, the top ones here are ground and then we have 5 volts. So these, this is ground, 5 volt, ground, 5 volt. So you would power off, let's just say, your receiver or VTX if, if your VTX runs 5 volt or your camera. So, But I would recommend sticking to camera here because you have the OSD is going to be on this side. So anyways, we have two 5 volts right here, two 5 volt ports for the, from the regulator. And then we go one step down here, we have the LED signal pin. Okay, so this would be the signal that goes to your LED to control uh, the, the colors on your LED. Jump here, we have the VCC positive. So this is the raw voltage coming from your battery. Okay, and then we move down here, which is TX1, which would be UART1. And here is RX3, which is UART3. And here is TX3, which also belongs to UART3. We jump here, and this is S bus. So if you have S bus, I bus, you would connect it right here because this is this does have the um, hardware inverter built into that pin, so you don't have to play around with any inverters. And then here we have the buzzer negative, and then the buzzer positive. Now let's go to these six right here. First one is RSSI, which measures your signal from your receiver if you do have that on your receiver. We here we have PPM, so if you're running a PPM. Um, if you wanted to use PPM protocol, then it would just you would solder it right there. You wouldn't go here. And then here we have a th positive 3.3 volt and then positive 3.3 volt, and these two are ground. So if you're running a spectrum or any receiver that takes 3.3 volts, then you would just uh, take the power from here. All right, let's jump to this side. So the first two are ground again, and then the second two are 5 volt. So that's good. So we have four 5 volt ports here. And let's take a step down. And this is V out and this is V in. Okay, so from the camera, you would take the yellow line to V in, the video in, and then it'll route it through your OSD and pop it out to V out, which would be the yellow line going to your VTX. So that, that's how that works right there. Let's check this one out. This is RX, RX6 and this is TX6. So that would be UART6 here. And then we have ground. And we have VCC, which is uh, the positive uh, port from coming from your battery pad. So this is the raw voltage from your battery, and here's the ground for it. And let's check this side. And that is really it. You have your USB port. Oh yeah, and we have two tantalum capacitors. This is very good. Uh, this will, um, I should say, this will reduce the high frequency noise quite a bit. So two of them is good. I mean, it's better than nothing. This is this will actually make a little difference. Um, what else do we have here? We have our pins which are going to connect to the ESC which is awesome and we have the USB port and where's the boot button there's the boot button where nowadays you can rarely break these but here's the boot button if you ever uh, bricked yours so you can just turn it on while holding this and it'll be in boot mode and then you can just flash it and you're good to go and we do have a current sensor which is always a big plus nowadays so that is awesome oh and I forgot to mention the OSD is Betaflight OSD so you can just tune it from your uh, 
just in the field from your receiver once you program it, program it in correctly. So you don't need to plug it into the PC, which is just, uh, it's very good. It's very, you, you, it reduces a lot of time wasted to connect to a PC. So that's it for this part of the uh, flight controller. Let's jump to the ESC. All right, so the ESC, this is a 30 amp ESC, and I think, it, I believe it takes a two to a 6S LiPo. And as, as just looking by it, I see a lot of capacitors, which is good. But don't forget, this is a four in one ESC. So we have four ESCs here. So yeah, no, we won't know anything until we test it right now. And it is, um, it's rocking BB2 chips. So it's DSHOT 600 ready, it's capable. It could run DSHOT 600 right out of the box, which is awesome. And um, all you have is just the pads here for your, for your motors. So that's all you really need. Let's check the orientation if it's correct. So, M2, so I believe it would go like this. Let's see, motor one, two, three, four. Correct, and then how would this go in? This would go in like this, where's the arrow? Yeah, perfect. So this was thought through, so that would be just perfect. So this would come off the left side of your quad, um, your battery terminal. And what I would do is, what I would recommend is actually um, making this, uh, just cutting it and making it smaller because uh, that'll this actually can carry noise and create problems um, for your flight for your um, <clears throat> FPV footage and for your whole just overall system it could actually create a little bit more noise so just try to get this as short as possible these wires right here all right so what else do we have here now let's just take a look at the diagram together um, so the the pin connector right there the JST pin connector uh, so basically what we see here is 12 volt and ground so that means this has a 12 volt regulator on board which is awesome I was not expecting this uh, this means we should have high hopes for the FPV footage for the for, so we don't get noise so this is very good so we got a 12 volt regulator right here and we have the ground we have 5 volt regulator and then we have VCC positive which is the the, the batteries positive just direct current from the battery right there in the ground and then we have our signals one two three four perfect uh here this is um just if you needed to know how these pins are working you can so you can see ground five volt so these two would probably power up your flight controller uh here's just the ground maybe for your escs one of these they bridge them all together and then you got your signal one two three and four which i don't know why they did in this orientation but it doesn't really matter and here's the battery, and I think this returns back to the flight controller, the, the VCC and ground. This would return back the voltage of uh, the battery, so you can actually see it through the VTX on the flight controller. All right, so um, let's just take another quick look. I don't see any tantalum capacitors. I just see some regular ceramic capacitors. So uh, we're going to be testing this ESC and the flight controller together, as well as recording the FPV footage. I am going to be connecting the, the uh, VTX to the 12 volt regulator here and the camera to the 5 volt regulator on the flight controller. However, um, the test results might be, they might seem very good or they might not seem very good. Now if they seem very, 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 very good, it's because all of these capacitors are probably working in, uh, in parallel or in serial, so they're all together, okay? So remember, we have four ESCs here, and then if you're using all these capacitors just for one motor, it might seem just absolutely phenomenal. But um, it would probably, we really cannot get a good result then. Uh, I can't, we cannot really, um, we can't call it a real test until we actually go fly it with a noisy setup then. Um, just because it might be working, we, it might be just using all these capacitors for one motor and they're actually for four motors. So we will know that, but I hope they're divided in a way where, uh, you know, like these capacitors are for this motor and these capacitors are for that motor and so on and so on. So we will know right now um, how this is gonna work out for us. And that is really it, so yeah. Let's get started. Let me prepare everything and then we get started, guys.
All right, guys, so what we just saw from the results, or what I just saw from the results, I ran the test around 10 times, and every time is the same thing, really. Now, the voltage spike is very good. It's 19.2 volts. I'll have this on the screen. This is the voltage spike. And the voltage drops 11.6 volts, which is good, but possibly not good. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, I'm not sure if all those, e all those capacitors right now were just were active only for one motor. Now, if not then this is good if they are then this is not so good at all not so good you're talking about one motor and if they're all working and one motor's on and able to turn and, f and just beat the crap out of that osd uh with just one motor that's um that's a bit scary now the the motor i've used was the emax 2205 s 2300 kv so um yeah it's it's a bit mm, it's still too early to tell but right now from my testing I, I see noise and what i'm going to do is my next build i'm actually going to put those motors on it which is the emax 2205 s2300 kv and uh, we're going to fly it and then see what's going to happen if it's going to have noise or not but i'm i'm putting possibly 80 percent chance there's going to be noise now I took uh, the power from the 12 volt regulator for the VTX, which comes out of the ESC. Uh, but just, I didn't expect, to be honest, I didn't expect the OSD to be, you know, to flicker this bad. Um, I was expecting maybe noise in the VTX or the camera, but actually, it, it does have noise. There was a specific test I did. It was just me just playing with it on certain uh, levels of throttle. And there was a point uh, maybe between 40% to 60% throttle where the VTX flickers so bad that it's not even there anymore so uh, I don't know you know um, it's uh, I don't know it's too early to tell uh, this comes back to you uh, you can do your research on this one I'll be sticking it on a build very soon uh, my next build actually is going to be the Asgard because I'm very curious to try that one out um, I couldn't really test that one because I couldn't hijack the signal since it's all built into itself. So I found I, I tried to hijack the signal, but it didn't work. It wouldn't let me. So I'm going to put that on a build to actually test the noise. But this guy seems noisy. I could be wrong, but from my testing, uh, so far my testing has been telling me it's noisy. It really turns out to be noisy. So I believe this guy is going to be a lot more noisier than the Matek F405. The Matek F405, I think the, the all-in-one solution uh, with the PDB and the flight control, that seems pretty solid, to be honest. Um, I'm getting a brand new flight control since i burned that one uh that was my own mistake i, I shorted it out um, after the testing uh, so we'll put that on a build a very noisy build as well and fly it uh, but i believe i think also the hglrc f4 flame beats this um now i don't know but i still i i really can't say anything i just tell you that it's going to be noisy uh the testing shows me that it's noisy so it's going to be noisy the uh the voltage drop is good but if it's good, if not, all those capacitors are working. So if just a specific amount of capacitors is working for this motor, motor 1, then that's very good. 11.62 and the max was 19.2 volts. So that's very good. But if all those capacitors were working and we got this result, then with four motors, this is going to be terrible. Um, so that's something to note on this guy. Um, a low ESR capacitor will help, but... Uh, we won't know until we stick it on a build, and I'll try to do that as soon as possible for you guys. Uh, maybe I'll do two builds tonight, and then uh, we can fly those maybe tomorrow. So, uh, in conclusion, it's... Uh, I can't say really much. That's all I can say, all I can show you is what's on the screen and what shows me. Uh, for right now, it just doesn't seem promising. I had very big high hopes for this one, and... Um, Right now, I'm not, I'm not very excited to put on a build. I have a feeling it's going to be a, a bit of a headache. But I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, and I hope I am completely wrong. But, um, I mean, just it's so clean to set up since it plugs right in. And, um, yeah, so this is the DYS F4 combo. So, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, this is going to conclude it for this video, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, if you guys have any suggestions or any comments, just feel free to let me know. And, um, and that's it really, guys. So take care, happy flying, and I will see you next time.